Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to another episode of the Montreal Canadian series. I think we're on the sixth or seventh episode. And if you guys remembered in the last one, we were trying to trade Weber. We tried. We basically shopped him around, offered him to all the teams in the NHL. And the teams that caught my eye the most were uh, Minnesota and Anaheim. We tried a bunch of trades, and it did not work. Uh, we tried basically a trade like this, a similar to this one at least, um, with the Minnesota Wild for Matt Dumba, but they totally were unwilling to sign, or to trade Dumba, I mean, to us, mainly because Weber is a declining player. So you guys can see here he's 34, top 4 D exact, so he's not even a lead or anything. So we're trying to get an elite player for Weber while we can, rather than wait and maybe another year and trade him at the draft. Maybe he'll drop to an 85, 84, and then we will be for sure screwed if we wait that long. So my reasoning here, as you guys see, last year he's an 87, now he's an 86, so he's dropping. And the reason why maybe Anaheim would want to trade for Weber is because they're their status is a contender and they're 9, 13, and 6, so they need to shake things around, in my opinion, I think. And Jacob Larson's an 83, so by getting Weber, they would, they would go up by three. That would be good. And then we would take a couple of their salary players as well in Franzen and Patrick Eves. So that's around $4.5 million or 4.25 or something. And then we would give them Weber and we would retain some of his salary. We would give them just a roster player in Waked and Limbaum as well. And we would trade... Um, uh, Xavier Hamilton who's a potential elite player but the reason why I'd would, I would be willing to trade him is because he's only 48 even though he's 18 years old I think that it's uh he's a good player but yeah and we picked him up in in the sec third round sniper he actually is a pretty good player but his stats are not where they need to be and you got to give something because I tried shopping Weber around and nobody wants him. So I think this may go through in my opinion, guys. Let me see if I can take a little bit less of Weber's uh, salary. Maybe just drop it to 1.850. Would that go through? Let's see. Oh, they would, they would be a little bit over the cap, but let's just try it, guys. Trey rejected, so they're totally... Okay, so they don't want... Um, they say it's definitely insufficient. So, uh, let's see. Woefully insufficient. So, not where we wanted to see. Let's see if we bump it up to two million. Would they? Would they accept it with two million? I doubt it. Trey rejected. Okay. So if we were to give them a second round, that's pushing it in my opinion, guys. Maybe a couple fourths. Well, that goes through. I don't even think that's uh, that's enough, guys. Okay, a couple fourths. Let's or one fourth. Trade rejected. Okay, I think we may have to trade Weber for just a crap, not a crappy player, but a B level prospect. Honestly, like a top four rather than looking at elites, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, because we would have to just give a second round and then Hamilton and all that stuff. So maybe if we if we look to trade for a younger elite player and Hamilton as a base player, uh, maybe that may go through. But um, right now, guys, I think we're just going to have to trade Weber for someone else. Um, I don't want to wait too long. Maybe I'll wait until the trade deadline and see uh, how things are looking. I don't need to trade him right now. I'm, my plan is basically to go to, before the trade deadline or right at the trade deadline and try and trade him before this episode's over. Obviously, I don't want to leave you guys hanging with all the suspense, but um, maybe we'll take this episode until uh, till right after the trade deadline here. Let's see, we're at the end of November, basically December. So we'd have one month, a second month, and then a month. So two, so three months, essentially. And then we have three months to get offers for Weber and then Shaw and Xavier, um, Xavier Hamilton. So I'm thinking maybe I can take take it up all the way up to here past the trade deadline. And then in the last episode, I would just do the end of the season. But I think we're in a pretty tough position, guys, And if you ask me. Uh, so yeah, my backup plan was either to trade Weber to Minnesota or Anaheim. 
that didn't work out. So I also was looking at, no, I, I messed up. I also, I didn't want to go to draft class, but I also was looking at um, other players, like not tier two or second tier prospects, but maybe top fours that may grow into like 85, 86. That would be unreal if we could get players like that. But um, yeah, I was looking at some players everywhere in the NHL. Uh, let me see. I have some in the Pacific. So maybe Gabe Velarde might be available. He's not. I'm not going to trade anymore for um, maybe a young defenseman, maybe some other prospects as far as um, they can be goalies or even forwards. So I, I pointed my. I saw Velarde that caught my eye for sure. Same as Muzzin. Muzzin's a bit younger than Weber, so we might be able to get him. And LA was interested in Weber as well. Also from uh, Minnesota, we might go back to Minnesota, but not get, um, what's his name, Matthew Dumba. We'd possibly get Jonas Brodin with maybe a Kunin or Kaprizov if we added something else, or Greenway as well. And then from the um, St. Louis Blues, we might be able to get Colton Pareko. We would get younger. I don't think Pareko's as good as Weber, but um, that's someone that I also decided to scout and maybe try and see if I can get uh, Clem Colston, I think his name is. He is a former first-rounder, so I think he might be a player that I, that I may look to get maybe by trading Weber and Xavier Hamilton or someone like that. We will see, though. Um, Weber's, it looks like he's pretty untradeable, in my opinion. It's... It's pretty tough to even get even his value because if you guys saw there, we were offering our trade value was considerably higher than uh, Anaheim's, but they just totally did not want to get. Um, they didn't want to take on Shea Weber's contract. It seemed like he's not a terrible player, but they just don't want Weber's contract, you know. So let's just look at defense and then top four, nothing lower than top four, and then. Maybe the potential medium medium and higher. I think that's what it is. And then we will just search now and see what we can find. Uh, Heiskanen, Dahlin. All these, are, uh, all these guys are basically elite. So we'll look at top four guys. So Pareko is a guy that I was say, telling you guys uh, that I want to look at. Justin Falcons is another guy, 27. But he's all actually going into free agency maybe next year. He only has one year left in his contract. So he may be going into free agency Tyson Berry, I think, is another guy that may be going into free agency. So we do have options on the right-hand side. So we don't need to get a right-hand defenseman right away. Uh, Clef Bomb is here as well. I don't know if I want to get him. Maybe we can scout him. And He's an 85, so not terrible. We might be able to get him if um, Edmonton is interested. Muzzin, like I was telling you guys earlier, Hamilton might not be a bad pickup. 85 and then top four medium. He's not worth that much, actually, when you take a look at his trade value. And he's only 26, so he might be a player that I may be looking to get. Clefbaum and Hamilton are actually two pretty good players. Uh, Fowler, not really. TJ Brody, not really either. I want to I want to stay. I want to have my players younger than 28, ideally. So, yeah, those are the players that I saw uh, that I kind of wanted to scout as well. So maybe we might do some a little bit of simulating, like I was saying. And see how our team is doing. You guys see that Tyler Sagan is completely killing it still. Um, the free agent signing that we had on July 1st. And I think that the strategy of maybe getting a younger player, not as good, maybe not elite, and then wait for another, uh, either Justin Falk or Tyson Berry to go into free agency the following year, not this. Wait, I think they're going into when, when this July 1st in 2020, so... If one of those two guys goes to um, free agency and we are able to land on him, we would be able to get a pretty good pairing, especially if we got Colton Pareko, let's say, or uh, Dougie Hamilton, or um, what was the other guy's name? Um, Clef Bomb, and then we ended up getting Falk or Barry the next, well, on July 1st. Or Our first pairing would be extremely good, in my opinion, next season, so... You got to keep that in mind, guys. So we'll go to a rivalry game against Boston here. We'll simulate a couple weeks and see. Uh, actually, I didn't notice that the RFA thing was still on, but whatever. We passed it. 
uh, we'll just simulate up to the Boston game like I was saying so we'll just um, accept that scout again so and this, this other scout and I think I hired a couple scouts because we needed them but yeah I just want to see how our record is and um, in a couple weeks hopefully we can get some offers for Shea Weber I've scouted a couple of these guys Lafreniere, Unroth or whatever Enroth, sorry, off Enroth, and I've scouted them pretty good. So, Summer Stylers, um, Nicholas Backstrom, and then Lafreniere is Patrick Kane. So that's incredible. I also scouted this Oli Ortio because I'm obviously looking for defensemen, like I was telling you guys, and his potential is actually medium elite. That's confirmed. And Victor Hedman is a similar playing style. So I'd ideally like to get a player like this. Maybe I was thinking maybe trade um. Uh, what's his name? Xavier Hamilton for one of these picks at the draft. If I can hold on to Hamilton or something like that. I don't see any other defense. Or maybe Eklund. Matt's Eklund. I might look at him in the SHL. And Yurchina as well. But I need some. I need some. I need to draft some defensemen, guys. Uh, oh, Erickson. I didn't even see Erickson as well. So I'll, I have to do some work in the SHL. Some more for Erickson, Eklund. And your China, because I'm. It's almost assured that my first round pick will be a defenseman here. We need to stuck up our covers with uh, defensemen here on the first round with our prospects, because I don't think we have enough defensemen. So, eighteen nine and two, we've kind of started losing a few games, three games in a row of losing. And Trey Weber has been injured. The player that I'm currently trying to trade, guys, gets injured. So. Thankfully, it's only for a few days, not a few days, but a few weeks, not that many weeks. Um, and we'll bring Petri up, or Petri, sorry. And then Osterly will come up here. Sure, he can just take over for Weber's place for a bit. And then we'll bring Jolson, who's gone up to a 79 um, up there. But yeah, like I was saying, I want to draft a defenseman here in the first round next year. Not doing too, too bad, guys. We lost against Boston at home, so we got to take our revenge here. Boston's a good team, too. 18, 10, and 5. And we're 19, 10, and 3. So we got to beat Boston here at the TD Garden. We don't have Weber, our best defenseman, but obviously we're going to, we're looking to trade him. So we're going to have to be without Weber um, this season, most likely. So first period, 2 to nothing. Rodriguez and Tyler Sagan. We take the two nothing lead. Basically, the both goals are actually scored basically on the same, in the same area on the ice. So, second period. Three to three. Come on, Price or it's Pickard. Dang it, Vergeron, Moore, and Marchand scored three goals in the second. Thankfully, Tyler Sagan scores another goal against his old team, but we are in trouble a little bit. 22 to 20, 24 to 23, the shots for Boston. Boston has a five on three and they score Patrick Bergeron, Patrice Bergeron, sorry. I don't know why I thought of Patrick Kane, maybe because I was talking about him earlier in the episode. Do we have a power play and we don't score? Come on, guys, stop giving them power plays. Can we score in the last five? 30 shots for the Habs and we don't score. Come on. And to Karask actually beats the Montreal Canadiens. He doesn't have that much success against the Habs, but... He beats the Montreal Canadiens in this game. Tyler Sagan had a valiant effort for the losing team. Two goals, two hits. Bergeron had two goals, two hits as well. And Marchand at the first star with one goal, two assists for three points. All right, guys. So after the loss against Boston, I completely forgot that we had also lost Price. That's why Pickard was in net. Uh, Price is going to be back January 18th. And then Weber is back on the... 2nd of January. Mete also has an injury, but he's he's still playing through it, thankfully. But the injuries are actually hurting us quite a bit right now. I didn't I completely forgot the price was injured as well. So uh, as soon as Weber gets back, we're going to look for a trade because I don't want him to get... Or maybe I won't put him until he is fully healed, just in case we don't lose him for the season and then we're completely screwed. Um, but yeah, maybe on the 2nd... Or if he gets back earlier, I uh, won't put him in until the second or whenever he's fully healthy. So I'm going to simulate all the way up to the second and see uh, where he's at. 
One game against uh, Florida. Can we beat them? We do in overtime. We beat it. We beat the Avalanche the next day, which is good news. Uh, we got a game against Ottawa. And okay, Shea Weber's back now, so I'm gonna continue because I don't want him to get re-injured, like I said. So another game against Ottawa, we lose, but we beat Pittsburgh the next day. So we've had two back-to-backs, and we've done pretty decent, in my opinion. We're 22, 12, and four. Uh, Detroit has a good team too, actually. So that's pretty good. Um, let's take a look here at the standings. We have 48 points. We've only played 38 games, though. The other top two teams have played 41 and 40. Sagan is still killing it. I want to see where Weber is right now. I want to see if he's fully healed. If he hasn't, then that's going to be an issue. But I think he has. Osterley will go down, and then Weber, it looks like he's fully healed now. All right, so let's put him up here on the first power play. I mean, first line. Let's see if he's on the power play as well. He should be. Yeah, okay, perfect. All right, guys, uh, we're back there. Uh, we've brought back Weber. Now, what I wanted to take a look at was the players that I scouted. I just want to make sure I have all their information now. Who did I scout again? Come on, who was it? Did I scout Clefbaum? I I'm trying to see who I scouted. I can't remember anymore. Okay, I'm going to scout Clefbaum because I got, haven't scouted him yet. I'm going to scout him, see how good he is. Um, oh, I scouted some people from the LA Kings. Okay, perfect. Gabe Velarde. 74 top medium top six only 20 years old he basically is one of the players another top six i don't know if i would want to get him muzzin is a top 485 so i might be looking to get him and then do they have any other prospects cal clegg i thought i thought i scouted him i think he's in the hl so i didn't i guess uh, let's see what the value is for Velarde and Muzzin. Pretty high, if you ask me. If I put Weber and not... I'm not going to put Hamilton, but if I put that other low elite... What's his name? Kobusu. Not really interested, but... I mean, it wouldn't be terrible. Muzzin's 85. How old is he? If he's 29, 30... He's 30, so you know what? I'm going to say no to Muzzin because he's going to start decreasing anyways pretty soon here, if you ask me. We also scouted, uh, what's his name? Jonas Brodin, 83 though, and 26. He's basically done growing, so not really ideal. Yeah, I'm just thinking right now, guys. So what's up? Did I fully scout him? Four bars, yeah. He's four bars everywhere. Brodine would be my second choice. I think my first choice would be um, Clefbaum right now. I completely forgot Muzzin was that old. Kaprasov, I think he's fully scouted. and He actually has some pretty good stats. So if I was to get him and then trade maybe Xavier Hamilton, would that maybe work? I'd have to take on a little bit of cap space. That might not be a terrible trade, guys, because Kaprasov is a high top six. So that's basically elite. And he's already a 78, and he's a third-line checking forward. He could be a first-liner for us. He would be better than Domi. So that might not be a terrible trade, if you ask me. Let's see. Who has one year here that they're willing to give up? Pattern. Those guys are making too much money, and they have two years. So they have too much term. But you know what? I may just suck it up, guys, if you ask me. Yeah, I might just get Felino or Pattern, maybe. Pattern, so we can get him. And then, yeah, they'll be under the cap now. And we wouldn't have to retain anything for Weber. And then if we gave them, who can we give them? Pekka makes so much money. I'm going to for sure trade Pekka and Rowney as soon as I can. Okay, Antoine Wake, would that go through? Okay, they need one more player. Okay. Uh, so, who else? Who was that other guy that I wanted to give them? Limbaum. Limbaum. So, this would go through Weber, Hamilton for Kaprasov, Brodin, and Paterin. 
Um, I think that may go through. I think I might do it, guys. Let's just try it out. Oh my god, guys. It actually went through. Should I take it, though? Let me just hold off for a little bit. But let's just remember this trade, guys. Kaprizov, Brodeen, Paterin, for Wake, Limbaum, and Xavier Hamilton. Wow, that's pretty good, if you ask me. If I can keep Hamilton, let's see. And I add the low elite. I feel like I'm just... Um, I might be messing around with them too much. And they may get pissed and not accept it. But let's just try it. Low elite. And then... Maybe a second rounder? Should we try that? Why can I add anything? There you go. Kaprasov is for sure a player that I would actually be willing to get in the near future. So that's that's a pretty interesting deal if you ask me. Would this go through? Trey rejected. Okay, so they for sure want um not Kobasu, they want the other guy, the the medium elite. For Kaprasov, he's how old is he? Let me just check. 22. He's actually getting up there in age, so I don't know if I want him. Should I get him or what? Third line checking. Top, high top six. 20, 22. When does he turn 23? <sighs> nothing to report. Nothing. Okay. He would be nothing more than a depth forward for us. Okay. Two years remaining. Oh, I don't know, guys. This is... I'm going to do the trade if it works. I, I was hoping he was more like a 80. I mean, not an 80, sorry. Uh, 20 year old or something like that. But um, he's not, obviously. So let's see if this would go through for Pareko. I think I was trying to get. I want to see how good Pareko is. Yeah, Pareko is significantly better. I don't think he's been scouted enough, though, guys. His overall and his, and his um, role is not where it needs to be as far as as far as where I was looking, what I wanted to know. But maybe if we got Thomas in return, Thomas and Pareko, would that go through? Maybe I would need a. Would this go through? Trade rejected. No. Okay. So. I think the trade that makes the most sense here, guys, is um, Minnesota. But that scares me a little bit, if you ask me. If you ask my honest opinion, guys. Dimitri Jaskin. Okay, so if we were to do this. No, they still wouldn't have enough cap space. If we were to retain a little bit of Weber's. How much would we have to retain for Weber's? A little bit under. Yeah, a little bit under a million. So 0 0.95. <sighs> Ideally, I would like to get Pareko more, but I would like to get Kaprizov instead of Thomas as well. Because Thomas already, he's a 71, but he's 20 years old, so. Oh my goodness, so Pareko or Brodeen. Let me, let me scout uh, also the Oilers player here. Let me see if they have any good prospects, though. That they would be willing to take on. Wow, look at this guy. Look how good this guy is. Vernarski. When was he picked? Oh, he was the third overall pick. Sorry, he was the third overall pick here in uh, last year's draft. Yeah, who could we get? <sighs> Yamamoto, maybe? I don't know how good he is, though. Vicentine, Sinishin... Zach Sinishin. We'd have to we'd have to do some uh, scouting for sure, though, if you ask me. Clef bomb. Let me see. Just compare the values for Clef bomb and Weber. So Clef bomb's less than Weber already, but I don't know how good he is. And Edmonton has a salary cap, so we wouldn't have to take out, take on any of these uh, crappy players. But I'm gonna send my scout to Edmonton, guys, and see if he can scout. Um, if you can scout Clefbaum and some of these other younger guys as well. Let's see. Do I have anybody? Yeah, someone in the Pacific. Scout specific players. 
And then let's go straight to Edmonton here. I thought they had Jeff Skinner, but Stuart Skinner. Um, who else do could we possibly get? Let's just scout uh, Jesse Pulis Jarvi just in case. Um, I want to scout Vernarski too, just in case. Why not? Who is this Gibbons? Is it Brian Gibbons? Okay, yeah, no. Yamamoto, we're gonna scout too, because he might be a player that we may get. Who else? Darnell Nurse, let's just get, let's just scout on him too. Top four, 24. Darnell Nurse might be another player that we'd be looking to get as well. And then Oscar Clefbaum, and that might be it. Yeah, those are the players that I want to scout. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, let's confirm the assignment. And we need, we need answers as soon as possible. Like, this guy has an A for region, so he's going to be done January 7th. So in a few days here, should I risk playing Weber a few days? I don't think he's fully healed now. So I don't, I really highly doubt he's going to get injured again. So if I can go past the game against Edmonton, because I don't want to trade him to Edmonton and then have to play him. So let's see if that would, that would work. We have a game against Detroit. We win 24, 12 and, and four. We lose against the Caps, the defending champs. We have a Vegas and uh, I'm no Trey Offords. Okay. Well, not my fault that nobody wants Weber or um, what's his name? Weber or Shawzi. Okay, so we have a trade offer here. Ryan Paling, a fourth for Vegas, a second, Nicholas Haig. I'm most likely going to say no. I don't know. I don't even know why they would come up and try to trade us. Try and ask for a Paling. No, Nicholas Haig, six. No, nah, no, nah, he's not worth it. Paling is a top six. He's already 76, so he's grown a lot. He has 22 goals in 36 games, so I'm going to have to politely decline Vegas. You can come back if you want Weber, though. And then we lose against the Edmonton Oilers. Okay, let me see if we are done scouting now. Clef bomb. I sent him to go do a full scout, so a complete scout, I mean. So let's see. I feel like this is going to be a long episode, guys. We have a lot of stuff to go through. We're trying to figure out Weber's situation. So he's 85, 26. Not terrible, if you ask me. He's probably going to cap off at 20, at 85, because he's already 26. Um, Darnell Nurse is one overall lower, but he has two more years to grow. So it's either or. He has a little bit less trade value, though, so you probably won't get to where um, Clef Bomb is, but it's only one overall, so should I try and trade for... <sighs> this is so hard, guys. It's pretty hard if you ask me. Like, it's a lot of game managing and, you know, wanting to make the right trade. So if we can trade Weber for... Clef bomb straight up. I would honestly try and do that first. Clef bomb for Weber. I think that might be a good move if you ask me. Clef bomb for Weber. Would this go through? We would get rid of Weber's contract, which would be good. And then we'd have four more years of Clef bomb at 4.615. Let's just try, guys. Trade accepted. We believe this transaction will contribute to our success here in Edmonton. So Clefbaum's already one below, and he's four, I think six years younger, I think. So I don't know, guys. I think that was a decent trade in my opinion. Um, we kept our Xavier Hamilton guy, so we didn't have to trade him, and we only got one overall lower. And we got rid of Weber's contract, which is good news too. So yeah, Clefbaum is 85, so he's well scouted. Um, and yeah, he's a top four just like Weber, so... I'm going to just do the lines really quickly, guys, and I'll bring you guys back once that's done. All right, guys, so we have the, our newest acquisition here, Oscar Clefbaum, 6'3", 215. Not a bad player, if you ask me. Top four. He's he's probably not going to grow anymore, but he's only one low, overall lower than Weber. And I'm, I feel like we might have been able to get a little bit more. Um... 
maybe like a pick, but that would have been just pushing it. So I'm happy with Clef Palm. And if we compare that to our last, our other trades, uh, the one that the Minnesota accepted was Kaprizov and then two more um, salary dumps and Brodeen, who's an 83. And I think he's the same age as uh, Clef Palm. Let's just take a look, actually. But it was Brodeen. Um, yeah, Brodeen here. I think he's 25, 26 as well. No, let's see. And he's only 83 and he's 26. So that would have been a major, major drop off. You obviously would have gotten an um, Kaprizov, who's a 78. I may still look to get him. 15 goals. Is he? Play? I think he's playing in the Chell, guys. I think he is playing in the show. Let's see. How do I? How do I check this? Uh, full career stats. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so he's had. He has 15 goals so far this season in the NHL in his rookie season. I may be looking to get him and. Try and add him instead of Domi because I'm not too comfortable with Domi as a first liner, if you ask me. Um, let's see. Would that go through if it was straight up Weber? I mean, Hamilton for Kaprasov? Probably not, actually. So, you know what? I'm going to have to say no to that. Um, Weber's gone, though. So, that's good news. Um, we have. What's his name now? Clef Bomb. Top four. Not terrible. He can definitely play on our top pairing, in my opinion. Uh, but only time will tell because you guys know that it was between Clef Bomb and Nurse. So I want to check Nurse maybe at the start of next season if you guys can remind me and see who is better. Because Nurse will probably be 26 and Clef Bomb will be around 27. So they'll both basically be done growing. So. Let's just simulate up to there. Um, Carter Rowney has been injured. So Carter Rowney is another player that I want to give away. Um, we lose the first game. Carey Price is finally back. So let's let's bring him in, I think. Yeah, let's bring him up to the up to speed again with the games here. So okay, Lindgren's gonna be a player that we we trade for sure. Um yeah, so Lindgren's gonna be a player that we trade for sure, maybe for some picks. Rowney and Elon and all those guys are going to be trade bait as for sure too. Um, but yeah, that's basically the plan that we have so far going into the trade deadline here. I just wanted to simulate a couple games to see how we simulate with Clef Bomb compared to Weber. Okay, so let's see. That's been done. Okay, so Quinton Byfield has still hasn't been... Um, Still hasn't been scouted, but I don't even know where he's at. And a row, I don't even know where that even is. I'm going to scout for more of these Swedish Swedish guys. Um, Eklund actually hasn't been scouted. No, he hasn't. So he's a defensive defenseman, but he needs to be scouted more, especially for his potential and your China as well. So I'm going to do that after I'm done here with um, the simulating guys. So 27, 17, and 4. I think we made the trade. Okay, when, when are we stopping? I thought we were stopping there. Okay, let me see. Let me see the full stats here. When did we trade for Clefbaum? I think it was here. So we have 1 loss, 1 1 and 1, 2 and 1, 2 and 2, 2 and 3, 2 and 4. So we have, we're 2 and 4 so far since trading Weber. But that's okay. That's usually how things are when you first try to try to gel with your teammates essentially so i want to see also um how do we do this okay view stats i want to see clef bomb stats i want to see if they're comparable to weber's tyler sagan is still killing it over a point per game great news clef bomb actually has some pretty good stats as well 31 points in 51 games obviously he doesn't score as much as weber but that's fine um that's okay, in my opinion, at least. Nikita Sherbeck is doing good. Duran is doing good. Domi, Gallagher, Sagan. Let me see how many years Tatar has. He has two more years. So my plan is to just keep Tatar for this year. Trade him next year. or Trade, trade him at this year's draft or 2020 draft. Try and get maybe a prospect, a top six prospect or something like that. Or even a, a defenseman prospect. 
that would be ideal. And then once Kokanyemi is ready to take the second line reigns, then we would can move Dre and play him with Sagan. And then the only player that we would need would be just a good right winger and then move Gallagher down and then Domi to the second line. I think that's pretty much my plan. If Domi's not good enough for the second line, then we can trade him potentially. But he's actually simulating pretty good 37 points in 48 games, so that's pretty good. Sherback has... So all, I don't know. These guys all are basically seem to be um, playmakers. I don't know where to even check their... check. Yeah, player type, playmaker. Drain's a playmaker, I'm assuming, too. Or no, Dren's a sniper, but he's not hasn't scored that much. And then Domi's for sure a playmaker, right? Yeah, playmaker. So two playmakers with Dren, who's a sniper. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see, guys. We'll see. Um, that's in the future. Just wanted to just give you a little bit of my plans, but um, that's what we're that's how we're looking. Twenty seven, eighteen, and four. We're third in our division right now. Uh, one point behind the wild. Two points behind the wild, or being out of the playoffs. So we need to start stepping it up here. Um, but the trade for Weber was definitely necessary in my opinion. And I'm just going to send some scouts to get a better grasp of the players that are about to be drafted in this year's draft. So I want to definitely dra or look at some of these SHL teams. I'm going to look at specifically these players and scout them individually. And then I'm, I think I'm going to focus on all these defensemen guys. So I'm going to go to the extra Liga and the SHL. And then this guy's from the Q, so I might look for him as well. He's a medium top four though, so ideally I wouldn't want to wouldn't want to draft him with my first round pick. I'm trying to look for some gems here, you know, guys. So I'm just gonna send uh, my scouts uh, to check out these young players, and then that takes a little while. So I'll be back. All right, guys, we're here. Um, we're trying to make a trade for maybe a potential top six player defenseman that we can add. I know we just traded Weber, so we got rid of uh, a right-hand defenseman. So we're going back to Edmonton. 80 overall, Matt Benning. He's in his last year of his contract. He makes $1.9 million. So if we can trade him, trade them Lindgren, fringe starter. He has some good, he had a good, good, good postseason last year, if you guys remember. Uh, Delorier, just a player to give them. And then a fourth round. So it's basically... Matt Benning for a fourth and Lindgren a French starter. I think this might go through. Let's see. Trey rejected. Okay, the value just isn't there. So if we give them a fifth as well, that might be pushing it for 80 overall. A sixth. Let's see, a sixth. Fourth and a sixth. Would that go through? Trey rejected. Okay. So I'm going to look for another similar player and then see um, see if they would accept it, guys. So one second. All right, guys, here trying to trade Lindgren. Nobody really wanted Lindgren except for Minnesota. So Lindgren for a third. Let's just try this out. That doesn't happen. So fourth and a fifth, maybe. Fourth and a fifth next year. Would that go through? Come on. Let's go. Trey rejected. Okay. So let's see if we add a third and then we add one of our picks. Maybe we move up. So if we add a fourth, Winnipeg's fourth. Lingering in a fourth for... That's a lot of value. Maybe a fifth, actually. I don't want to overpay, you know. Uh, a fifth from the Montreal Canadiens. 2020 fifth for a third. One. There we go. Trey rejected. Okay, so if we give them a fourth, then that's as much as I'm going to do. They should accept that. Okay, so Lindgren and a fourth for a third. So we go up. We have a one more contract space now. Um, the reason why I traded Lindgren was because we had three NHL goalies with us. And if we was if we were to send Lindgren, he would have for sure gone picked up by somebody in uh, wave on waivers. So we got something for Lindgren at least. I think they also wanted Deloria, so I may trade them Deloria as well. Let's see. Which is crazy. I basically want everybody. Yeah, okay, so Rowney. Actually, I'm going to trade them Rowney first for a seventh. 
Brownie is a completely useless player, in my opinion. He's playing in um, the AHL, and he makes 1.335, which I did not get. Trade rejected. Okay, so maybe Brownie won't be a player that we can trade. Maybe if we traded a few players, a few bad players. Let's see. Brownie, Pekka, who else? And Waked. Would anybody be interested in them? I just need to get rid of some players so I can... Because these guys have... Well, Pekka has, has one year left, but then Rowney has two. So, idea, ideally, I would like to trade uh, Rowney as soon as possible here. Wow, they have Brian Gionta. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's crazy. What are you doing over there, Tampa Bay? First six. These two guys, first six. So we're trading them back, Pekka. Would that go through? Trey rejected. So seventh. I honestly just need to get rid of these guys, guys. A seventh for two players? No. Okay. So a seventh next year, maybe. Because I feel like they're a little bit less value if you try to get them from the following year. So that might be better. Trey rejected. We're glad that you're paying attention to your trade vlog. We aren't interested at all. And okay, so if we give them a seventh, that's insane. If we have to give them a seventh to take their seventh and just take our players, that's pretty crazy. So our seventh for their seventh in 2021. Let's try that. That doesn't even work. Wow. Okay, so we might just be stuck with these guys, guys, but... At least we traded Lindgren for something. We got an extra third here. Um, and if you guys remember, that defenseman that was picked there, uh, he was actually traded for, he was actually drafted, sorry, in the third round. So I'm going to look to see if there are any other players that may help us. Or actually, you know what? I'm just going to simulate close to the deadline and then we'll do our last few deals uh, a day before the deadline. So. I mean, we're basically at the deadline, actually. Never mind, but we will just simulate. Oh, no, we're not. Never mind. Okay, we'll simulate all the way up to this Calgary game, and then we will do a end game simulation for the Calgary game. And then after that, we'll just make our deals. So 27-18. So we lose in a shootout there against Winnipeg. Winnipeg has a decent record. We lose in a shootout. Two shootout losses. Okay. Brendan Lemieux, second... A sixth for a fourth. That wouldn't be terrible. Lemieux is an AHL player right now. If I can, if I can get away with not trading them a, th a second, and if I can just do a third and a fourth or something, that would be clutch. So a third and a fourth instead of a second and a sixth. Yeah, why not? We're basically trading all of our picks there, but... Or if we got rid of that, okay. Lemieux and a third for Kairou, that wouldn't go through for sure, yeah. This proposal is almost insulting, so... If we got them a fourth as well from, from this year. This year's fourth and next year's third for Kairou. Let's try that. Trade rejected. Okay, so yeah, no, I don't want to... I'd rather not, guys. Kairu is not a player that interests me that much. He interested me a little bit, but not that much. And they've been trying to trade Kairu for the last... Since the GM season. Since the franchise mode started, so... I don't know. We have 20 losses, though, so that's not what we, where we want to be. We're 30, 20, and 6. We need to start picking it up here, though. Matthew Pekka has been injured, so... That's for the AHL, so he's going to get replaced. The HL is doing pretty good, 20, uh, 28, 16, and 6. Ryan Paling for Jake Bean. Wow, okay. So at least they're trying. They're trying to give us um, what we're asking for. Obviously, we um, put that we knew we were looking for some defensemen. Jake Bean's a good player, but I don't want to trade Ryan Paling. He's a future as, as a centerman in our club. So if we can trade them... Where is the other Suzuki guy? Where is Nick Suzuki? Or, wait, what's his name? Ryan Suzuki right here. 
So Paling and Suzuki have basically the same value, but they don't want Suzuki, it seems like. So should I just try it? Ryan Suzuki and maybe another prospect because Paling is just a bit better. But I for sure want to keep playing Paling here, guys. And I don't want to trade him at all. So, okay, Delorier and Suzuki for Jake Bean. I haven't really scouted Jake Bean yet. But he's a medium top four, 21. It's probably in the 70s right now. Ryan Suzuki, 63. So he'll for sure take some more time to get get into the NHL level. He's only 18, though. Should I give up on Suzuki? You know what? I'm going to say no to this. I don't even know how good Jake Bean is. So that would just be trading someone to trade someone. So... No, thank you, Carolina. Thank you for offering something, but no. Ryan Paling? No, I don't want to trade Ryan Paling. They need to stop coming up to us for that player. We don't want to give him away. So, 31, 22, and 7. We're kind of struggling a little bit, guys. Not where we wanted to be. Uh, Michael Chaput has been injured, so replace the player. Pekka is back. We won't put him back into the lineup. That's whatever. And then can we beat Dallas? We do in a shootout. Okay. So 32, 22, and 7. Let's see how important this game is against the Calgary Flames. We are still in a playoff battle right now. 71 points. If you can start picking up some more wins here, guys. We need to comfortably get into the playoffs. Uh, I mean, we would have to drop... Less than 68 points if we wanted to miss the playoffs. But we don't want to go in one of the wild card spots and play one of the big teams. Because um, you never know what can happen. So let me just take a look quickly at the points here. Sagan is still killing it at a 91 overall. Gallagher pretty good. Domi pretty good. Duran pretty good. Clefbaum 33 points. So you slow down a little bit. But that's to be expected. Hmm. I think he was at, yeah, he was at around 30 last time we checked, I think, right? A few games ago, so he's actually slowed down considerably, but that's okay. We need to, we traded for him, so he just has to get better, and I'm sure he will. So this is what our team is looking like. I may be looking to get a better player than Della Rose on the fourth line there. Maybe we might have to bring Kotkaniemi, now that I look at it, or Shaw. Maybe I'll bring Shaw, actually. He's gone up to an 80, so... Shaw instead of Della Rose. I think it's time for Della Rose um, to get out of our team. At least our starting lineup here. Okay, so all three of these guys are centermen, basically. I'm going to put Rodriguez on the, in the middle there, and then Udo on the left. 78. So he's not growing as much as we want him to, but that's okay. Uh, and then... So yeah, ideally I would like to get a young, a better defenseman than 76. De La Rose is 24, okay. Yeah, so like I'm saying, I would like to get a better player than a 76. Uh, as far as like a 7th defenseman, a depth defenseman wise, I would like to get a little bit better than Osterley. Let me see who do we have in the minors. Kokonimi 77, so that's pretty good. McCarron, Sanford, Paling, Suzuki... So these guys are doing pretty good so far. Uh, let's see. Let's get this Brol guy out of here. Yeah, let's play Glebov, actually. I completely forgot he was in here. So Glebov will play against with Vaidemo. Uh, that's good. And Limbaum, by Meyer. So all these guys are 76, so no. I can't really bring anybody else up because they're not up to par. So they would just be playing um, in the as a 7th defenseman. They wouldn't even be playing, guys, so... Let's just simulate quickly this game, in-game simulation at the Scotiabank Saddle Dome here in Calgary, Alberta. Let's simulate for goals, first period. 3-1, to one, the Flames have the advantage on the Habs. Kachuk, Udon, Bennett, and Tom Pyatt, I think. Yeah, Tom Pyatt. Pickard's in net, unfortunately. The shots are 13-8, so Pickard has to step up. He's only made five saves so far. So second period, let's check it out. Can we come back into the game? Okay, we do Victor Mete. Not fully, not a full comeback yet, but 
Victor Mete scores on Lettinen, so the battle of... Oh, no. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. The battle of the backup, sorry. And Lekkonen scores on Le Lekkonen scores on Lettinen. Petri scores on Lettinen again, so we have completed the comeback. Can we hang on, guys? We had a power play, but we didn't. So we're out shooting the Flames at home. And Goudreau scores on Pickard. Not what we wanted to see. I wanted us to score on that power play, guys. But can we just take it to overtime and score? Or score before that. Five minutes to go. Four, three, two, one. And Sherback scores in the last minute of the game. And Clefbaum scores in an empty net. So good stuff, guys. We That's a pretty good comeback. And we needed that win. Now the wins are extremely important, if you ask me. Sherback on the second line had two points. One goal, one assist. Petrie, one goal, one assist. Playing top pairing minutes. And Armia had two assists. Let's continue here. We are still sitting third in our division. We are three points away from Buffalo and four points away from Tampa to for the division lead. And yeah, so now comes the time where we need to start trading, guys. I might advance one day and see if there are any trade offers that come in. If not, okay, no offers. All right, so now we're going to look to deal some players now. Um... I don't know if we're going to deal too many. We're going to have to do too many deals. I just want to get, like I said, a young, not a young, but a defenseman. Uh, what, what was that all about? Sorry, I need to go into trade for players. I don't know why it was only showing me the NHL players. But yeah, I want to go into um, the trading block here and take a look and see if there are any seventh or sixth defenseman that can come in just bottom pairing guys and i'm gonna look at it with you guys quickly sam Steele, nothing here barrett hayden no he's on the trade block debrusque brendan gooley cronwall wow <laughs> nicholas cronwall let's just take a look here at the flames how much is he i think he'd be worth a little too much i mean i want to see how many years he's got Four years, so no thank you. I don't know why the Flames... Why in the world the Flames would make that trade? Okay, I accidentally exit, exited the trading block, but let's just go back into it. I don't know why you would trade for an aging defenseman like Cronwall. He's a good player, but... In all my respect to Cronwall, he was a great player back in his day, but right now I don't see him being a good player, especially when you have three more years to go in his contract, so... You guys saw there that we just passed, uh, what's his name? Uh, let me see. Let me go back here again. Sorry. Oh, yeah, Tyson Berry. Sorry, that has one year. He's on the block. Jonathan Erickson maybe might be a player that I'd be looking to get. Or Trevor Daly, 79, as an insurance policy. Uh, 10 points. And then Jonathan Erickson, I feel like he might be 79, 78, so I wouldn't touch him. Maybe daily. Let's keep going here. Edmonton, Sakara, Russell. How much would Russ? What would Russell be? How many years does he have, though? That's the question. Two years. I actually want to see how many years daily had. Okay, he has one year. So daily would be a, another player. Benning, as I was showing you earlier, too, would be another good player. A Muzzin is too good to trade for. I don't want to give up too much, like I was saying. Let's see, Joel Ward, Mark Stahl has two years. I mean, he's pretty crappy. Um, Vatnin has only one year, but no, he's too good as well. McQuaid, two years, no. Schuster, Weidman, no. Alex Chase, oh no. <laughs> Alsner's on the block. That sucks. I would have never, I'd never trade for him again. <laughs> Not worth it. Justin Braun. 77, though, but I really doubt he's that bad. And then Brendan Dillon, 81. I really doubt he's that good, to be honest. Um, we don't have that many players scouted, it seems like. Brickley, no. Alexiev, spot check. All right. 
So let's give it a try for daily, maybe. Why not? Trade for asset. Let's give them a... Who are they interested in? Let's see. Looks like they're interested in some... Some of our four words. Oh, no. I meant to be... I meant to go lowest trade value. Okay, so not really, actually. I thought they were going to be interested in some of our four words. Rodriguez, no. Okay, so let me try and offer up some picks instead maybe a fifth next or sixth next year let me try a sixth okay i would have too many players so that's an annoying thing as well if we can finally get rid of matthew pekka oh he's injured crap oh, okay carter rowney i think carter rowney has two years so uh yeah that's the one that i wanted to get rid of okay so if we can get rid of carter rowney uh i would do it let's see you're not even in the right city, let alone in Barl Park. Okay, so if I do f sixth and a fifth, that's how much we gotta give away to try and um, try and get rid of Pekka. I mean, not Pekka, Rowney. So fifth, sixth and a fifth for a seventh defenseman daily. That will not go through. Okay. Edmonton now. Let's move on to Edmonton. What's his face here? Mad Ben. <clears throat> Mad Benning, sorry. Where is he? They don't want to give him up, but I know he's 80, so he'd for sure play on a bottom pairing. I really want to sign this guy, guys. If I give them a fourth, would they be interested in a fourth, I, th I wonder? Not from this year, from next year then. Maybe, maybe an unsigned prospect. Do I have any good ones? That they'd be interested in. Let's see. Oh no, no, what am I doing? Salary. Years left. Other way. Okay, payer. No. Volchenkov. Low top six Volchenkov is actually worth a decent amount. So Volchenkov for Benning. Volchenkov Rowney and a fourth for Benning. I think we have uh the trade value taken care of so let's just try that trade accepted okay so we've we had to give up a young top six uh defenseman and then the fourth and we got rid of rowney for benning so now we have our top six player that's gonna round out our d i think he is 80 right let's just check him out oh i accidentally went to contracts sometimes the game is not as responsive as i would like it to be just the menu screens. They're a lot better than they used to be in on NHL 16 and 17, I think. But still not, not as responsive as I would like it to be. So we might have to get rid of... What should we do here? Hold up, hold up. Let me just think about it. We might have to do... I want to keep playing Mete, though, honestly. I think he's going to get better. Four goals, three assists. What's Riley? One goal, two assists. So Riley's going to be the odd man out for sure. And Benning's going to come in 80 overall. Yeah, that's good. That's a good trade in my opinion. A fourth and a prospect. And we got rid of Carter Rowney's contract. I think that was some good business by us. Uh, I think that may be the only trade we make, guys. Um, I'm just thinking right now there's anything else i would do let me just take a look again at the trade block or the players that we have and see if there's anything else i would want to do so just give me a couple seconds all right so i'm here trying to trade not mccarran sorry about that i'm trying to trade della rose for a fourth round pick i think his time has come to an end with us um he is just basically a scratch player because we decided to play shaw and then if we need to call up someone we're going to call up one of our one of our young players like uh, Karkaniemi or even Ryan Paling because they're up to a 77 as well. So I think if we can get a fourth, let's see a third. Let's just try a third. Probably they're going to say no, but let's just try. They want to give him away, give away a third. So actually a third is too much. No, no, no. That's for sure going to not be okay with it. They're not going to be okay with that. So fourth and then a seventh. Let's just try that. Fourth and a seventh for Della Rose, a former second-round pick. 
I don't want to let him go and I don't want to see him go, but he just hasn't grown and he has one year left. So he's going to, he's going to be signed. He's going to have to be signed in the future. So I don't think he's going to grow that much. So let's just try that. Dre rejected. Okay. So a fourth then. I think the value is on our side. So let's just try that. Trade rejected. So are we not even going to get a fourth then? Five, fifth and a sixth then. Let's try that. Not, not even their fifth. Edmonton's fifth. Did that go through? Trade rejected. Okay, so a fifth for De La Rose. Did that go through? Trade accepted. So we got De La Rose for a fifth. No, I wanted a fourth. Or I, I think I even wanted a third, actually. And that didn't go through, but that's fine. He was, he was going to be signed anyways next year. And there's simply no room for him. So now let me see uh, the AHL lines quickly before I end the episode. Because if Kakaniemi and Paling and Suzuki need some help, then I'm for sure going to provide it to them. A weight is going to be scratched. And who can we bring up? I just need all skaters here. Who is scratched? Okay, so David Brawl. Okay, no. so I'm going to sign a AHL player, I think. Or maybe I'm going to do this actually instead. Yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm not. I don't think I'm gonna. I don't need to sign an AHL player, do I? AHL's looking pretty good. Who is scratched? Colkin, Pizetta, huh? Nick Henry. We don't even know this guy's overall. Shapu. Okay, so Shapu is actually injured. So when Shapu comes in, he is going to take basically weight spot or something, and then we can play him as a center here instead of Pekka and then bring Pekka down so he can help out Glebov a little bit. I think we are set in the AHL. Who are our goalies in the AHL lastly? This is a pretty long episode, I think. I've been recorded for over an hour, so this is going to be good. Drouin, 86. Sherback, 82. Pretty good. So our top six is actually pretty good. Obviously, I would like to get some better wingers on the first line and then maybe move these guys up to the second. But our center core is unreal. Our top two is unreal there. We decided to bring Shaw. Um, some Shaw there, uh, 80 overall. Pretty good. Osterley and Mike Riley as our two defensemen. It's far for injuries. And then I'm going to sign a forward really quickly. I'm not going to trade for anybody. I'm just going to sign a forward in free agency. Let's see. And that'll conclude the episode. I'm done with the trades, guys. Oh, I went to contracts by accident because this game is slow. Anyways, free agency. So after I sign the player, that's going to conclude the episode, I think. Unless there's an insane offer on the table, but I don't think so. Uh, who else? Who can I sign? Riley Barber, Corey Trop. Corey Trop, bottom six. Do we have more information on, no, not Nick Jensen, on Riley Barber? Not really. So Riley Barber is supposed to be 78. So I'm going to sign Trop then. We have a, we have a spot, an opening uh, in our, um, in our lineup there. So I guess Trop is 30, so I maybe should have signed Barber, but that's fine. If anybody gets injured, then Trop can slide in. Or maybe he doesn't, you probably won't even have to cite in because then we'll recall Kakaniemi. But just in case, until the end of the season. Now I'm going to advance a day again. And I'm placing my Camilleri, actually. Let me see this guy. View player info. Probably isn't good enough for us. Yeah, 77. How many more years? Yeah, one year, no. Going to decline. He can go to um, to the minors. I don't care. And yeah, it doesn't look like there's been any trades for us. Let's see if there's any waiver players. Reina Valiev has been injured. Okay. Assistant player replaces player. Okay, so Trop accepted. So he'll play with us. So we And we lose against um, the LA Kings there. But anyways, we're going to stop it here, guys. I'm going to show you where we're sitting in the standing. 73 points. We're four points behind the Tampa Bay Lightning and five behind Buffalo. So I would like to be one of the top two teams if we can going into the playoffs in the Atlantic division. Uh, what else can we take a look at? 
Let's look at the draft class before I let you guys go and see. I sent some scouts to scout these players, so hopefully we have a little bit more knowledge, and we don't. These guys still don't have... We don't even have the potential for these guys, so... Maybe I'm going to change the... Okay, top four for Eklund, so we got Eklund's potential. Orteo is one of the guys that I for sure would like to get. Elite potential for a defenseman. We didn't get your Chinas, but okay, so now we have Eklund. So we Eklund's not a player that I would like to get for sure. Uh, Maxime Brodeur, top four, not really. Any other elites? No, not really. Okay, so it's too early still. Let's see if we actually have any gems or busts, because we know how good that was in the draft. Okay, we have one gem here. Oh, crap. We have one gem here going in... Probably the second or third round. He's a medium elite goalie. And that's confirmed. So we have to keep an eye on him. Uh, let's just scout him a little more. Strength and weaknesses. But yeah, he is from the German League. So we have to keep an eye on him. And then we have a few busts. But that's it. We don't have any gems yet. Um, let me see here again for best potential. Let's scout this guy as well. Defenseman. Two-way defenseman. 49th in the second round. Let's scout him. Can we scout him even? Yeah, scout the player. Not playing style of strength and weaknesses. Kimo Alanen. Scout him. And then... Yeah, I'm just going to do some more scouting here, guys. Um... I think that's it. I'm just going to end the episode here. I'm just going to do some scouting in the background when when the episode's done. And then I won't simulate any days or anything. I'm just going to just want to make sure the draft is set up nicely for when it comes. But let me see how many more games we got. We I think we have just a month and a half or a month and a bit left of the season. So... It's basically crunch time here, 33, 23, and 7. And the AHL actually is killing it right now, which I'm happy about. Hopefully they can make it past the first round, and hopefully we can as well with the addition of Tyler Sagan and stuff like that. But I'm going to leave it at this here, guys. And um, thank you so much for watching. In the next episode, we'll basically just end the season, and then the following episodes, it'll be the playoffs if we make it. Hopefully we do, fingers crossed. And yeah, leave a like if you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.